The sparrow's not worried about tomorrow or the troubles to come. The lily's not thinking about the seasons, the drought or the flood. The tree that's planted by the water isn't phased by the fire. So why should I be? Cause you take good care of me. You take good The sun's not worried about the winter, cause soon it will pass. The light's not thinking about the darkness or the shadow it casts. A heart that's planted in forgiveness doesn't dwell in the past. So why should I be? Cause you take good care. church. I hope you're having a blessed day today. Today we're going to talk about partnership benefits part number five. And part number five of this lesson is, is, is going to be pretty powerful because what we're going to be talking about today is a specific partnership benefit that you receive. You know, a lot of these things when we talk about partnership benefits a lot of it's what you do and then what you receive but this is what I'm going to be one of those benefits that you receive partnership like we've talked about so many times is not just about giving or serving or going or you know not just your participation in it but also what you receive so many times when people hear the word partnership, they're like, oh, they're, they're talking about my money today. It's, it's not just about what you give financially. Partnership is about what you receive spiritually, what you eat off the table with. If you are a part of our discipleship curriculums, you'll know that in the introduction weeks, there's one thing I particularly say. I say, we don't take offerings during the class through the semester. We receive an offering at the very first week, the introduction week, and then I tell you, if you want to sow, you can sow online. But we don't receive an offering during the class because it's dedicated to your reception or what you receive. Today we're going to be talking about what you receive in partnership based on your growing immaturity. We're going to talk about your growing immaturity. There's a lot of places we could talk about this at in the Bible. I mean, many examples, but we're just going to go as the Lord leads us. There is something that came up recently. Somebody I had uh, shared a word with from God and that person that I shared with, the word is going to be exactly what we're talking about today. The things that the Lord does in our life that happens inside of partnership to grow us into maturity. So let me pray and then we're gonna jump right into the lesson. So Father, I thank you. I pray you bless everybody under the sound of my voice. Let the word become wisdom, revelation, and the knowledge of your son. Spiritual seed sown, producing in our body, mind, will, and emotion, transforming us by the renewing of our mind, conforming us to the image of Christ, growing us up in the measure and the stature of the fullness of Christ. God, we love you and we thank you in Jesus' name, amen. We'll go with me to 1 Kings 17, starting verse one. And Elijah the Tishbite, who was of the inhabitants of Gilead, said unto Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel liveth, before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years, but according to my word. 
And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Get thee hence, and turn thee eastward, and hide thyself by the brook Cherith that is before Jordan. And it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook, and I have commanded the ravens to feed thee there. So he went and did according unto the word of the Lord, for he went and dwelt by the brook Cherith that is before Jordan. And the ravens brought him bread and flesh in the morning, and bread and flesh in the evening, and he drank of the brook. And it came to pass after a while that the brook dried up, because there had been no rain in the land. And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Arise, get thee to Zarephath, which belongeth to Zidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain thee. So he arose and went to Zarephath. And when he came to the gate of the city, behold, the widow woman was there gathering of sticks. And he called to her and said, Fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel that I may drink. And as she was going to fetch it, he called her and said, Bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in thine hand. And she said, As the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake, but a handful of meal in a barrel, and a little oil in a curse. And behold, I am gathering two sticks, that I may go in and dress it for me and my son, that we may eat it and die. And Elijah said unto her, Fear not, go and do as thou hast said, but make me thereof a little cake first, and bring it unto me, and after make for thee and for thy son. For thus saith the Lord God of Israel, The barrel of meal shall not waste, neither shall the curse of oil fail, until the day that the Lord sendeth rain upon the earth. And she went and did according to the saying of Elijah, and she and he and her house did eat many days. And the barrel of meal wasted not, neither did the curse of oil fail, according to the word of the Lord which he spake by Elijah. Now, this passage in 1 Kings 17 is, is tremendous in our understanding of how God grows us up into maturity. Now, Elijah starts at Samaria, and then Elijah goes to the brook Cherith. Now, we know that the word Cherith means separation or cutting. This is when God separates Elijah out from the people in Samaria and the cutting is referenced to the fact where God removes Tishbite from off the name of Elijah. But then we know that the word Zarephath means refinery. So when Elijah goes to the refinery city, the the, the place of Zarephath in the metropolis of Zidon, it is all about his refinement. And I've said this many times that At the brook Cherith, you can receive from the Lord. You receive supernatural sustainment. The Lord reorients you into His to seeing Him as your source. I mean, there's many things that happens at the brook Cherith. You know, we did like 80 lessons on provision and obedience. But it's only in the context of others, in partnership with others, the city of Zarephath, where refinement takes place. Because refinement cannot take place in seclusion. You can receive sustainment. You can have the Lord reorient you and your source, how you see and who you see as your source. There's many things that can go on in the brook. But it is only through partnership that you see refinement take place. Now, we talked about this a lot before when we looked at Malachi chapter 3, I think it's 1 Peter, that we looked at refinement. But as I was praying about this, the first passage I want to look at for just a minute is in 1 Corinthians 3. 1 Corinthians 3. And this is a powerful passage that Paul writes to the Corinthian church about them growing in maturity. So let's read through this. We're going to actually read all of chapter 3. It's not very long. It's about 23 verses. But I want to read through all of it today to give you some understanding. And then we're probably going to look at one more place after this. But let's read through 1 Corinthians 3. And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. I have fed you with milk, and not with meat. For hitherto you were not able to bear it, neither yet now are ye able. For for ye are yet carnal, for whereas there is among you envying and strife and and divisions, are ye not carnal and walk as men? For while one saith, I am of Paul, and another, I am of Apollos, are ye not carnal? Who then is Paul, and who is Apollos? But ministers by whom ye believed, 
even as the Lord gave to every man. I have planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. So then neither is he that planteth anything, neither he that watereth, but God that giveth the increase. Now he that planteth and he that watereth are one, and every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. For we are laborers together with God. Ye are God's husbandry. Ye are God's building. According to the grace of God which is given unto me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation, and another buildeth thereon. But let every man take heed how he build thereupon. For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now if any man build upon this foundation gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. If any man's work abide which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. Let no man deceive himself. If any man among you seemeth to be wise in this world, let him become a fool, that he may be wise. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God, for it is written, He taketh the wise and their own craftiness. And again, the Lord knoweth the thoughts of the wise, that they are vain. Therefore, let no man glory in men. For all things are yours, whether Paul or Apollos or Cephas or the world or life or death or things present or things to come, all are yours, and ye are Christ and Christ is God's. Now you might say, Cody, why, why are we reading this passage when talking about maturity? Well, you see a couple main principles come to light in this passage. And the first is that Paul says, I came to you, but how I talk to you and how I speak to you is unto babes. Because you're carnal. You can't receive the deep spiritual meat. And I need to grow you into maturity. One of the things we see more often than not is somebody that's new in faith and new into the, into the kingdom of God who has not received any teaching, who's still very much immature in the Lord. You have strife and divisions and envying and all this carnality of man come to place. You have to be, you have to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. You have to grow up into the measure and the stature of the fullness of Christ. It's not automatic. It's something that you have to work on. It's something that takes time. You get saved, and the minute you get saved, your spirit gets born again. It gets sealed with the Holy Ghost. You become one-third wall-to-wall Holy Ghost. You are God on the inside. But your mind still has to be renewed. Your body is not born again. Your spirit is born again. And because of this, and because we know that all sin resides in the flesh, and that that's where sin comes from, the carnal nature of man, Paul says, I'm coming to you to grow you into maturity, to eliminate this type of envying and strife that comes from an immature believer. And Paul says, you need to start focusing on these works that you do that are revealed by fire. The refiner's fire, the city of Zarephath. The things that happen when you come collectively in a group. There are things you can do separate. But there are things that you do together. And these are the works, the, the things that bring forth eternal rewards. And if you do the things that are gold, hay, or silver, gold, precious stones, they'll last forever. But if you do the things that are wood, hay, stubble, that are burned by the fire, it says you'll suffer loss even though you'll be saved. Well, what does this suffering loss have to deal with? The suffering loss is the fact that there are rewards that you could have received, but you did not receive. And this is because you have not grown into maturity. 
And the only way you can grow fully in maturity is in partnership with others as the Lord grows you up. Listen, you can receive a lot from God on your own. The man Elijah was at the brook Cherith for one to two years, supernaturally sustained in the morning and in the evening by ravens. I mean, that's miracles in and of themselves that people today maybe see small glimpses of. But for that type of miracle every single day, it was just powerful. So it's not like you can't receive on your own. You can. But you'll never enter into the fullness of what God has ordained for your life and the fullness of the maturity of a believer and the reception of the eternal rewards in the age to come unless it is done in partnership with others. And Paul said, this is why I've came unto you. One of the reasons why I've came unto you is to grow you in maturity. It is your benefit in this partnership. Paul says, I want to speak to you as spiritual, but I have to speak to you as carnal until I grow you up. Because you're, this division, this strife, this envying, all these things that are going wrong in the camp. Because this person's viewing their works greater than your works. And, you, and all this stuff is going on. Paul says you need to enter into partnership. And, and this type of partnership is your reception. What you receive from the man of God ministering unto you to grow you up. The greatest example I can give of this practically in this ministry is watching our daily teachings. Coming every morning at 9 a.m. and watching our daily teachings. Getting enrolled in our discipleship classes. Have you taken our BSM discipleship class yet? It's only $35. It's one hour a week for six months. That class right there would change your entire life. The people that have taken it will testify that class is worth three grand at a minimum. It's a Bible college level class and it's only $35. Very inexpensive, but it will change your life. It'll grow you up. Have you taken our advanced curriculum? Taken the end times curriculum, divine purpose, marriage? Are you even watching our daily teachings? Do you come to it? Do you follow us on Sunday? There are so many ways in which if you would come and receive the teaching, you would grow up from a babe, one that has all of these problems and strifes and envying and division. It's not saying that you're of young age, because you could be 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 years old still having strife with other people because you're still a babe in the Lord and you don't understand what the Word of God says. Paul says, I need to grow you up so that the works you do will last for all of eternity that you won't suffer loss, that you will receive all that God has ordained for your life. And one, of the, and one of the main ways he does this is when you enter into partnership. Paul says, I'm coming to you. We are coming together. And this is not, at this moment, about what you give. Partnership benefits are not always about the seed that you sow. Now, we appreciate seed being sown. I thank God for everybody that sows seed. You know, you partner with ministries to advance them forward so that the message keeps going. I believe in sowing seed. But today, I'm focusing on the fact of this is what you receive. When you come, partake of the table, and we grow you into maturity. And, and the reason for growing you into a maturity is not for us, but it's so that you can stand before God and have works that last for all of eternity so that you don't suffer loss. That's one of the things I wanted to talk about today. The other one I want to talk about for just a second, a main truth that I shared with somebody recently. And let's go into John 15. So one of the benefits that we talked about today in partnership is the level of growing and maturity when you receive. When you come to the house, when you come to the table, and you allow us to teach you and grow you into maturity so that you're works will last for all of eternity the other thing that happens in maturity and, and the growth of maturity and the partnership benefit of growing in maturity is this truth in john 15. john 15 verse 1 i am the true vine and my father is the husbandman 
Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Now, you might say, what, is, what does this have to do with growing in maturity? Well, the Lord, the Father, we're talking about specifically the Father, is a husbandman. He's a vine dresser. He's a vineyard keeper. He's referenced as a gardener. And the reason why this is important is because as you go to bear fruit, the Lord will prune. It says, He taketh away. He purgeth it. The purging that happens in John 15 is very different than the discipline and chastisement of the Lord. John 15 is not about discipline. Discipline I did a sermon called Purging, Pruning, and Accusations. Or, or I did Discipline, Pruning, Accusations. Whatever it was called. It was three words. One being the fact that you have the devil's accusations or the things that the devil does to remove things out of your life. You must resist him. You have the discipline of God because maybe your life isn't exactly on the path it needs to be. you got to get disciplined up, get back on track. But there's this thing called purging or pruning, if you read the New King James, where the Father will remove things out of your life. And you might say, well, why would God remove things? Well, if you're going to grow in maturity and you're going to grow into the fullness of everything that God has ordained for your life, as you start to bear, the Lord will trim back. Because the more you grow, the less time you have to cultivate intimacy with the Lord. Let me give an example. If you have a church that's got 100 people, and six months later you have 10,000 people. You know, you used to be able to study for an hour, and you maybe had two hours of work for the church. Now you got three, four hours a day. Well, you got 10,000 people. You have a lot more people that you have to pastoral counsel you have people that you have to minister to, you have funerals, weddings, you have graduations, you have events, you have uh, seminars, you have conferences. There's just a lot more moving pieces. And because of that, as you start to grow, the time that you have with the Lord starts to shrink. It's not because you're doing anything wrong, per se. It's just because you could be doing something great. The church is growing, the ministry is growing, people getting saved, people getting born again, and all of a sudden it just starts to go down. Things start to feel like they get taken away. I've heard Mike Bickle say before, he said, man does not have the wisdom nor the resolve, especially in the American church, to remove things when they're prospering. Because you see something that's going and flourishing, you're like, bigger and better is God. That's what people think when they think of the church, especially in America. But the Lord says it's not about growth. Now, growth is good. It's about cultivating intimacy at the heart level. The metric of greatness over your life is not the building that you have, the money that you receive, or the growth of the congregation. The, the metric for greatness over your life is the intimacy and the growing of love at the heart level between you and God. And that's a powerful truth because as the husbandman, he will remove things out of your life. Not because they're not good. You, he might remove things that are good and that are prospering. But the reason why they're removed is to give space to give you a deeper level of intimacy. The Father removed things out of my life last year. They weren't bad. They were actually good. They were ministry related. But the Father took them out of my life to give me space or to give me time to spend it with Him, to grow in intimacy with Him at an even deeper level. And because of that, the ministry flourished even past what it was if I would have stayed doing what I was doing. You might say, well, Cody, how does all of this tie together as a partnership benefit? Well, when you partner with the ministry and when you come under the covering and the authority that God has ordained at this ministry, let's say blank state ministry specifically, there are things that you receive. One of them is the growing up of into maturity. 
as you study, as you listen to us teach the word every single day, sometimes twice a day if we got classes, and you just listen to us, teach the word, and we will grow you from a babe unto spiritual. The divisions, the strives, all of the problems and contentions that you have in your life will start to go away because you won't participate in it anymore because you'll grow up. The other thing that happens is we talk about these rewards that last forever or the actual increase in your life of the glory and the power of God. And this happens when you come under this teaching and the Lord will prune you. He'll start to remove things out of your life for deeper level of intimacy with Him. Today's partnership benefit is not about what you do, but what you receive. Because partnership is giving and receiving. And the thing that you receive in partnership is the growing up, the teaching of the Word of God, the growing into maturity, the willingness to let God prune. You come under this ministry long enough, you'll start to see things come out of your life. And you'll say, well, why is that person gone or that thing gone? I enjoyed that. And the Lord's saying, I'm removing that. I'm purging it out of you. The, even the desire for it so that you will have space <clears throat> to dedicate that time to me. Because in doing that, what you thought was great, we will far surpass and glory. And the eternal rewards that will be there because of that will be great. And this is what you receive in partnership. We're out of time today. So, Father, I thank you. Bless everybody under the sound of my voice. I give you all the glory for everything you're doing. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen and amen. Church, I love you. God bless you. I pray you have a great day, a great weekend. Please make sure you join us tomorrow and Sunday. And if you are a part of our End Times curriculum, we had class last night on the Church of Laodicea. If you missed it, you need to go watch it. It's very powerful. But church, I love you. God bless you. Have a great day, and we'll see you tomorrow. Sparrows not worried about tomorrow, or oh, the troubles to come. The lilies not thinking about the seasons, the drought or the flood. The tree that's planted by the water isn't faced by the fire. So why should I? You take good care of me You take good care of me You know what I need Before I even ask the thing And you hold me in your hands With the kindness that never ends And carried in your love No matter what the future brings The sun's not worried about the winter, cause soon it will pass. The light's not thinking about the darkness or the shadow it cast. A heart that's planted in forgiveness doesn't dwell in the past. So why should I be? Cause you take good care. Take good care of me You take good care